Hey there guys, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together uh, for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process. Uh, so tonight we are continuing the quilt block uh, called Estelle. It is fancy fancy. Uh, it is from the Splendid Sampler 2. We are doing the quilt along for the Splendid Sampler 2. Uh, here's the book for it. And Estelle is what we're going to continue. So where we left off is we have to do, we have to make all these piles of half square triangles now. Uh, we finished the little four patches and I'll show you those. But tonight is going to be all about sewing the tiniest half square triangles uh, and seeing how that goes. And we're going for precision with this block because I know some people had some trouble with it. So I'm just really trying to get all my measurements right, trying to sew straight lines a little bit more than usual. <laughs> uh, so we're taking it a little slower and uh, just working on that. So I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get going. I'll show you where we're at. Here we go. Oh, I know the snow. Hold on, you guys. Ugh, there we go. Okay. We do not have snow yet. I actually, I went for a walk uh, this afternoon. So I've been swimming in the afternoon. So I went swimming and then I came home and went for a walk in our neighborhood just because I know we probably won't be able to do it for a while again. Tomorrow we are supposed to get some slushy rain in the afternoon and then we could get on Thursday we could get three inches per hour is what they were saying <laughs> in some areas. Uh, uh, I think it's just a hair west of us and we're going to get a little of that but what the heck. Three inches of snow an hour so I'm freaking out. I had to enjoy the spring a little bit today. <laughs> All right, here's Estelle. And we are, we have done, if you look right here, we have done little four patches. So here, we even did it the same colors, basically. So these are those four little areas there. We're done with that and we've cut almost all the bits we need for these half square triangles. Uh, I just have to do one more set of squares and uh, then we'll be ready to start sewing. All right, hold on a moment. Get a piece of fabric on there. Okay, so I need, out of this fabric, this is our last remaining fabric here, I need, first of all, to press it because it is crazy wrinkly, but we need, let's see, eight, eight, one and three quarter squares out of here. So that's just kind of like how we did um, how we did these other ones. We have them all ready to go. Oh, you're worried about your cherry trees because they're blooming. Ugh, yeah. I, um, I took a tour of our backyard today too when I did my walk because I haven't been back there since, God, last year, since before the snow, probably. Oh God, that's horrible to say out loud. Oh, sad. Um, but we have like some spring onions kind of coming, but not really. But I think our, our irises might be starting to come. All right, I think I have just enough fabric here. Okay, great. So I'm going to try and trim from this little edge here. We'll do the two ruler method. Oh, maybe not, I can just flip this around. So I'm just getting a nice clean edge to start out. But yeah, so we have nothing so grown and serious that, you know, the snow is going to do anything to. I mean, we've just been barely out of the cold and pretty soggy uh, so far. So nothing grown here. All right, well, I'm just going to rotate that whole piece. All right, one and three quarter inches. Again, I'm taking it a little slow with this cutting and measuring and sewing just because I want to get as precise as I can. Not that we're not usually precise, but just going at ex 
extra much. Okay, that should be good. All right, so now I'm gonna just cross cut these. I'm gonna start by getting a nice edge on there. A nice, um, it looks pretty square already, but can't be too sure. So I'm just gonna trim this edge off. All right, and now I need, um, I think I need eight of these. I'm gonna get a little higher for you guys. Betty, it could be your uh, internet connection speed, all that right now, because I think it's okay on my end yet. On my end, it usually tells me if my, my um, speed is slow. All right, one and three quarter squares. I'm gonna just do them all separately. I need eight. All right, one. Two, ah, you know what? You guys, I forgot to put on my cutting glove and <laughs> I'm freaked out about uh, slicing my finger or something. So I, I'm trying to get into the habit of using my cutting glove now. It's got like that, I don't know, Teflon or something um, woven into it. Who knows? That's what they say. Um, but in theory, I mean, you can still cut yourself, but in theory, if you scrape against it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't do anything. Like it's not gonna cut through like butter or anything. So, I don't know. I got freaked out again uh, yesterday because someone else put a picture of their hand all bandaged up on the way to the emergency room because they cut through their finger with the rotary cutter blade. That's why I'm, you'll notice I'm totally in the habit uh, I always leave it shut so it's open. You got a safety on it so the blade's exposed and then you can push it up so that the blade's not explo uh, exposed. You'll notice that I always have it closed except for right before I cut, I open it up, cut, and then I close it right away. Um, I've seen so many people just open it up and then lay it on the table like that. To me, that is so scary. You could just grab it and, uh, oh my God, slice right through your finger. So if if you practice anything, it's opening and closing your rotary cutter uh, after using it. Just get into that habit. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, two more. All right, one. Yeah, it freaks me out. There we had just enough with that um, fabric. That's perfect. Okay, now we are in half square triangle land. So let's get all of our pieces out. Okay, this is representing our white and our or our cream and our tan, which is really white and tan. In the instructions, the colors are listed by the colors that they use in the block and our colors are a little different. So in the instructions, this is our cream and this is our tan. I think this was our red and this was our navy. I think that's how we did it. So, all right, uh, we're gonna make half square triangles. So let's see, I need to, uh, um, let's just read this. Draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of all of the B. Okay, all of the B, that's that's these. So all of these we draw diagonal lines on. Two of the D. Okay, so two of these. And four of the E squares. The E squares are these. So we're gonna draw lines on the backs of several of these. So all of these, two of these, four of these. Okay, got it. 
Well, I suppose let's just, just not get ahead of ourselves. Let's do that. So let me just read it again. Um, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of all of the B, two of the D, and four of the E. Okay, I'm gonna just read ahead. Place a marker marked B square with an unmarked D square. So cut and press, make four, repeat steps four with marked B square. Okay, we're gonna to have to go through this one at a time. So I'm just gonna go here. Let's uh, draw our line on the back of the four, the two, and the eight that they mentioned in the instructions. So let's start here. I'm just going from corner to corner. This is what's going to help us. Um, we, we're going to sew on either side of these. I'm actually going to flip this around. Uh, we're going to sew on either side of this line that we draw on both sides. So there's our diagonal. We're going to sew on that side and on that side. So that's why we're marking them but we're only marking a certain amount uh, per the instructions. The next step is gonna be a whole pile of combining the right things together. And that's, that's why I couldn't jump ahead because I was gonna get, confuse myself way too quickly. So let's just do what they say <laughs> and uh, mark these first. I think we can, we'll just do that. I'm kind of doing that with cutting to you notice uh, yesterday I'm I cut out only the pieces I needed per step so uh, um, like to make these these little guys I only cut enough out for that and then I did that step just so I wouldn't confuse myself with all of these all of these um, pieces everywhere so that's why I cut out only what I needed which isn't very, you know, economical as far as time and energy and all that, but, um, you know, and fabric, but my fabric is already chopped into weird little bits from the rest of this project. So it's not like I could get perfectly easy, um, simple cuts out of everything anyway. So just for the sake of, oh, <laughs> thanks Leslie, just for the sake of, being able to keep my brain together. Now, if we were doing, if we did live videos like this in the morning, I'd probably have it all cut out. Everything would be perfectly organized and I'd know exactly where everything went and I'd have like my total brain, uh, assuming I had an hour <laughs> beforehand to have some, to digest some coffee, <laughs> then we'd, we'd be good to go. But it is the evening. And my brain is shutting down, so it can only handle one step at a time. I know what we're attempting. So, um, with all these half square triangles, so that's, that's good at least. All right. Four more, and then we are prepped. We are just prepping. So... Um, I've done half square triangles here before and uh, I don't always draw this line on the back. Sometimes I will just fold, sometimes I'll just fold the square in half and then press it down and then I'll have a crease and I'll, that'll be like my line, like how we're drawing the line on. Instead of doing that, I will just make a crease. But since we're trying to be really precise and these pieces are so small, um, we're, we're going to just do the line way. Um, I think that'll be a bit more precise for us. And this is just a guide for us to sew that quarter inch on either side of, of this diagonal line, diagonal line. So this is just here to help us. And I think I'm going to just keep going one step at a time because I'm a little confused at the next, uh, the next set of instructions like all at once. Um, so we're gonna just go a little bit by little bit. I'm gonna just get these little squares out of my way. Okay, let's do this. So this is my B. These are my D. These are the E squares and these are the G squares. So, okay, I think we got it. 
What is the first? Okay, place a marked B square. Here's one. Right sides together with an unmarked D square. So here's our unmarked D square. So two of these are going to go together. So right sides together. Okay, sew, cut, and press. So we're going to sew on both sides. We're going to cut them and press and then trim into uh, one and a quarter squares. Okay, repeat step four. So this is step four, making these. I'm reading ahead now. Repeat step four. Repeat step four with four marked B squares. Okay, so I'm guessing four total. So here's three more. And the remaining four E squares. Oh no, additional. Okay, wait. I think we might be... Okay, so I think we may be... So I think this make four, <laughs> I think... I'm missing that instruction. Like I was looking at it to be said here, but I think, um, but does make four, does that mean so four of these or does it make mean make four half square triangles? So that'll, that I'm wondering. Um, let's, let's just keep trying to pair these and see what happens. So I know I have one according to that first instruction. Okay, and then repeat step four with four marked B squares and the remaining, wait, repeat step four with four marked B squares and the remaining four E squares. The remaining four, oh, here. So these go together to make eight half square triangle units. Okay, so this makes sense. Four of these together will make eight half square triangles. Um, use the marked E squares and four of the G squares. <laughs> Bear with me guys, we almost got it. So these to make eight half square triangle units. Okay. So right now I have, I have one of these. I have this grouping and this grouping. I suspect I'm supposed to do the rest of this with here, but let's just see. Repeat step four with the two remaining marked B squares. Okay. Two remaining, oh wait, marked B squares. I have three remaining. Oh, it does say make four. So, all right, I'm gonna take one of these and one of these. I think, I, I think it's coming together now. So uh, it, it was make four half, squ half square triangles, not so four, it was make four. So each of these are gonna make two. So by doing this, this makes, this makes our four. So all right, repeat step four. Uh, we're almost there with two of the remaining marked B squares and, the, and two G squares. Okay, that's these. to make four half square triangle units, okay. And use the marked D squares with the remaining G squares to make four more. Okay, we got it. <laughs> so let's let's just go over this again here. But I, I, I got it, I got it now I think. So uh, we're gonna start out, I have two of my tan and white. So this is from the first step. I'm going to organize these by steps. So this was this was um, step four. We're going to do these. Um, step five. Okay, B is this and this, and then step six. Are these okay? So. Got it? This was step one, this was step four, step five, and step six. <laughs> so we are organized at this point. Um, so man, helping, like marking, marking what was 
your block color is really important. So I it, I had to know that my white ones were uh, color B from our cutting instructions. These tan ones, these tan ones here were D and then uh, E and G. So that was really important um, to get those together, <laughs> to, to like write those down. But I think I have it now. So, all right, you guys. <laughs> Step four in the instructions, it is just sewing these guys together. So I'm gonna just kind of group these still by, by bits. Okay, we got it now. <laughs> okay, we are doing, I'm gonna just sew all of these all at once and I'm going to keep them grouped in our little, um, you know, our, our steps, like our step four, step five, step six. So, all right, we're gonna start with our step four blocks. Um, we are matching up one of our tan squares and our white square. I'm gonna just lay them on top of each other so they're matched up as best as I can get. And we are gonna sew on one side and then I'm gonna do this one and then I'm gonna take it off the machine, flip it and then sew the other side of the diagonal and then same here. And then I will cut them both off. So here we go. We are gonna do it. So I'm aligning my diagonal that we drew on here with my uh, quarter inch mark. And then I know that my postcard's at a quarter inch too, so I'm, I'm aligning the diagonal along that too. That, that way I know I'm sewing straight and I'm gonna, and my needle is a quarter inch from that diagonal. All right, let's get this guy. Yeah, I think once I got through there, <laughs> Once I got through all that um, arranging of these, I think we're kind of good. And I'm gonna keep them separated by, by step, just so I don't confuse myself any, any more than I have to. All right, so I'm gonna snip off the first one we did. Just cause, like I said, I'm keeping them together and there's only two. Why not test these two before committing to all of them? Terry, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll test these two before um, moving on to all our massive amounts. So that's good. Not a bad idea at all. So here's, just gotta sew this one more and then, then we're ready with these. All right, let's get one of our leaders in here. Busy sewing up my uh, leaders to make the magic quilt. Quilt out of nothing quilt. Okay, so let's test these two. So I'm gonna get back up here. All right, so uh, what we need to do now, so these instructions are in the back of the book at, on page 137, how to do this. Uh, but we've done this a bunch of times here before. So we're gonna just go through that process. So we've sewn two of these together with right sides together and we're a quarter inch from that diagonal on both sides. So you can, you can already see that we're gonna get two half square triangle. Oh my God, they're tiny. Two half square triangles out of there. So we're gonna have this one and then on the other side, we're gonna have this one. There we go, so small. So let's first, we are going to trim, um, we're gonna trim them on the diagonal. So that line that we drew we are going to cut exactly on that line, which is just the, the diagonal to, to um, the, or the point to point on that diagonal. All right, and we're gonna use the glove. 
All right, there's one. So this will get us our four half square triangle units for step, step four. Okay, so there we are. Uh, next up, we are gonna press these. Uh, and I'm, I am gonna try and use the block lock ruler. I think just for precision's sake, I'm not gonna use the slotted trimmers. The slotted trimmers we would use now, um, but I think um, we'll just, we'll press first because then we'll get rid of any like distortion or anything that might be happening here. And let's move my book again. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna bring the mat up here and we're gonna stay right here. So these get pressed, I'm looking at the instructions, they get pressed to the tan side. I know it looks the same up close, but here it's, it gets pressed to the tan side, the seam allowance. So we want it to look like that. So I'm gonna actually put all of the tan sides up. I like having everything the same. And I'm gonna take my iron and we're just gonna give it a press just to get it set the seam, get it, everything nice and going. And then we're gonna fold over that tan side and give it a good press. So when we're done, these should measure one and a quarter inch inches or we'll trim them down to the one and a quarter inches. They are so tiny. So let's do the four. And again, uh, this is uh, like what Terry said, this is a this is gonna be our test. Because if, if we get these and they're at that one and a quarter inch and we just have to like trim them just a little, they're not too small. Um, that's what we're really testing for if, if they end up too small because then I gotta adjust a little bit. Um, but assuming they are just right, then we will move ahead with all the other half square triangles because this is just four of many, many, many. Ooh, I keep burning myself. Come on, edge. There you go. All right. And last up. All right, one and a quarter inches. Gosh, I'm not even sure I want to use the block lock room for this. Let's let's bring these down. Let's just give it a good measure first. Okay. I'm just going to use this just to see where we're at. So I'm putting the diagonal line on the diagonal seam. All right, one and a quarter. All right, we are in the ballpark for sure. So I'll just need to trim it a little. Um, it is, it's on the button though. I mean, you know, there's not a lot extra. Well, one and a quarter, actually, there's a lot. Oh wait, maybe I do have quite a bit. So I have, I had three eighths. So there, there is enough extra to, to trim. So we're good. So let's, let's trim these just so I can show you what the final thing looks like. Um, I'm going to trim one with, uh, my, um, I'm going to get my rotating mat here just cause I think it works great for this stuff. And I'm going to try it with my normal ruler first. I have this, um, two and a half inch one. Let's get the gloves on again. And uh, uh, we're gonna just try here, cause I think the block lock, it's one and a half inches, my block lock uh, ruler, but this is one and a quarter. Um, but I think it has, I think it has the ability to do one and a quarter, but I wanna cut one with a ruler first before I test that out. All right, so I'm starting out just making sure with the ruler that I have my one and a quarter inch fit within there. And then I'm just trimming the edges. And then, you know, I'll just rotate this. I could rotate the mat too. And I'm getting the diagonal back on there. So fussy, this little one. So now I have the diagonal lined up on the diagonal seam. And now I got the one and a quarter here and the one and a quarter here. 
All right, so all, all this is excess, so we're gonna trim that off. So this is gonna require some trimming. And with a ton of blocks, that's gonna take a ton of these little guys, that's gonna take time. So uh, you'll just have to bear with it. All right, um, here is my block lock, my one and, a, one and a half inch block lock ruler. But I think there's a slit in here, so I have the ability to do one and a quarter. And now that I have this one cut down, I just wanna test it. Uh, no, it's not quite one and a quarter. Okay, I'm glad I tested it. Yeah, so I don't think I can use the block lock rulers on here because mine is one and a half inches. Yep, that's not gonna quite work. So, all right, I'm gonna just continue with this guy then. <laughs> so small. All right, so let's finish these four and then we'll just sew. We'll worry about sewing tonight and maybe trimming them apart and then um, then we'll still have to deal with uh, cutting them all down. But it was good to test. It was good to just make sure. Because sometimes in, in these half square triangle instructions, sometimes they give you, the designers give you like no leeway at all. And it's the exact size. So you had to sew the triangle perfectly. Other times they start out a hair bigger. So you know, even if you veer, on sewing the diagonal lines, uh, they give you enough that you can uh, just trim it down later. And I think that's the case here. I have just enough to trim it down. And to me, that's a good thing because then I can hide sewing errors because I have enough to trim it down. Oh yeah, I, I saw that a video was posted um, about the block lock rulers. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I need to, because I need to learn how to use these puppies a little bit better than, than um, you know, I'm just, I haven't watched anything on how to use the block lock rulers yet. I just went for it when we were testing it out. My first time using it and playing around. Some of these are pretty close to one and a quarter though, so I, I, I'm gonna have to watch out. This one's a little closer, so I must have sewed this one with a little smaller seam allowance. Or a little, I guess, fatter seam allowance, making my square smaller. This is a little slippery. Okay, one and a quarter. Yeah, so put some nice music on or something because you're gonna be trimming these guys for a long time. <laughs> you know, this is just four and we're gonna have a whole pile of them. So we'll, we'll spend We'll be here for a little while trimming these guys all up, but that's that's just it's all part of the process. And again, I'm I'm really trying to be a little bit more exact with this block, just because there are so many small pieces, so it's a little bit of a test on accuracy um, for all these small pieces. So that's why I'm I'm being a little bit more mindful, a little slower. All right, there are our four. And if I had to guess, this is gonna be our center pinwheel on our block. So I'm gonna play around here for a little bit. Let's, um, let's make this quick. So let's see, ah, there we go. I always get a little confused on the direction of these. It takes me, takes me a few moments to twirl these in the, in the right way. So I'm just looking at the, the photo. There we go. So there you can, you can kind of see it's, it's pale because we're, we're using that tan, but there's our pinwheel. And then these guys will go on the edges 
of that pinwheel. So we got a block started here. All right, let's, um, let's keep sewing. So once we sew this together, it'll be the same size as, as these. But we got, we got it going. All right, so now these I'm going to keep, remember I had them all divided in steps. I'm going to keep them in their zone here. Actually, these guys were the earlier steps. Let's keep those in step one. <laughs> so this is step four. These are the step fives and the sixes. So I'm gonna sew all these together. So I'm gonna sew all these and then all these and then I'll rotate them all and sew them again and then we'll put them in their, their piles again. So back to sewing. Okay, here we are. I'm just trying to get it situated here. All right, so let's do these guys first. So we have um, the white ones are marked. So those are the ones that we want on top so we can see that diagonal. Okay, we are all lined up. All right. So my quarter inch seemed to be okay with that last group. So we're gonna just trust it. We're gonna do all of them on the one side. I would love if we could get these all sewn tonight. Then tomorrow we'll work on trimming them and uh, getting all our perfect little half square triangles. There we go. Oh, are you talking about the that horse block, Bonnie? You're using the craft text? That's a great idea. That, um, it holds its size. I don't think it shrinks at all. Um, and it gets a kind of crumpled leather leather look once it gets wet and everything. So even if it goes through the wash, it'll just look more and more leathery, I think. That's a good idea. Maybe I'll use, I think I have some of that laying around. I think I might use that too. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab, this is still part of step five, but it's those other, the other color palette of them. So in these ones, we drew the lines on the back of these. So I suppose that's an important part to these instructions. So if you haven't started this block yet, um, it tells you what ones to draw a diagonal line on. Draw only on those diagonal lines. Um, it is because how, sh how, um, she organizes them later how we know what goes with what is based on first of all the color the letter of the color so the cutting instructions you got to pay attention to what letter it is like b or d or whatever and uh which ones have the lines drawn on the back so uh, don't draw lines on everything just draw lines on the squares that it tells you to just go through a little bit by little bit uh, Leslie Ann, uh, craft text is made out of paper, but it's some like, oh gosh, it's some sort of material that it, it holds its shape. You can actually sew through it and everything too. I did a, a tutorial with, um, Sulky about it and talked a little bit about that. That should actually still be on sulky, sulky.com. But yeah, we talk about it a little bit more on there about craft text. All right, I'm gonna flip these around. I'm actually gonna just trim and flip. Some people just rotate and then start sewing back the other way, but I, I don't know, I'm not very good at that. So I'm gonna just 
I'm gonna just cut and sew as I go, I think. All right, now I'm, I'm rotating it the other way. So now I'm sewing on the other. Oh, you made that project, Don. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a free webinar that I did with Selkie. So if you go to selkie.com, um, somewhere on there, there's a learning area where they have videos and I believe they're all free. I think you do have to sign up for them. I think you just have to put in your information, but then you'll get access to it. I think you only have to sign up once and then I think you get all of them. But there's some great little um, webinars there. So I show how to make this cute zippered pouch and how to embroider on the craft text and uh, and then we talk about it a little bit. Oh, you made the kitty and the buffalo. Oh, that's awesome, Don. That's so cool. Yeah, there was a craft text book that I did. I did this um, zippered pouch and I did, yeah, a little buffalo. But then for the webinar, I did another one on white craft text. It comes in different colors. And uh, for that one, I, I embroidered a little, little kitty design on there. All right, two more, and then we have all of these sewn. All right, last one. All right, I'm gonna start up the next grouping right away. So this is the, from the step six now. And I'm just starting these right away so I can, I can use it as my leader so I don't have to put another leader in here. But same, same deal, we'll sew both sides. All right. These are all our, this whole chain is our step five items. I'm just gonna throw them back there. We'll trim them, we'll trim them after we're done sewing. Oop. And these are the step six. There's, there's more though for, for the step six ones. Oh, Dee, it sounds like you, you were super organized about this. That's smart. All right, and then these guys. Luckily, I know I'm gonna be working on this tomorrow, so uh, I don't have to like label anything too much, but if I was not sure I was coming back here right away to work on this, I would label the heck out of these. Like I would, I would mark, I would mark the fabric colors. I'd probably cut out little swatches so I could remember what color is what, um, what letter from the cutting instructions. And I would put these in a stack and I'd label like what step they're from. Um, I'd probably have to do a whole, whole thing. But since I'm keeping everything where it is, and we're gonna be picking this up right away tomorrow. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about labeling at all. But yes, if you are not sure about that, totally go crazy with your instructions to yourself. And I, I feel like I do that a lot on here, just kind of like, oh, I know what they're doing and, and do a quick glance at the instructions and then go through it. But, um, but just, there's so many pieces in this one um, that I, I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna be able to keep track of them all. So uh, in this case, we are doing all of them all of the instructions step by step. All right, and that is it. We have everything sewn. 
So all of our all of our pinwheels are now sewn, all the half square triangles for it. So we can jump back up here. Okay, let's start by trimming these apart. All right, so this is from my step, um, my step five pile. Just trying to keep like with like. Actually, I want this side with the line up. Okay, so here were our two groupings from step five. The B, yeah, and the, those ones. Okay, and then we got these from step six and these from step six. All right, so we're good to go there. I think we have time that we can trim these apart. So I'm gonna trim them and uh, and stack them how I want to press them. So for these, uh, it looks like we're pressing towards that side. So I'm going to have that up. Actually, it looks like we're pressing towards this yellow side for all of these. So that's that's going to be easy to remember. All right, let's trim these. Oh, let's get the glove on. Making a habit here. All right, for now I'm gonna keep the white side up just so I know what stack is what. Gosh, there's so many. So that was four, so this is four right here. That's all we did for this first step. And you know how long it took to do that, you know? No, it's multiplied by like six. So we will be pressing and trimming for a little bit here tomorrow. You guys are talking about improv piecing. So I, I'm kind of working on the background here. Um, I started it this evening. I'm working on a quick baby quilt um, for a shower that I'm going to this weekend. And uh, I'll, I'll be sure to show you guys it when I'm done. I'm... It's kind of like improv -y. I saw this um, post on Instagram of someone doing this where the concept is you take uh, you take two blocks, two random blocks that you have, could be completely different projects, whatever, and you just don't know what to do with them. And uh, then, uh, and you make sure they're like the same size. And then you just cut um, horizontal lines through both of them. And then you trade off you know, like the top row of the one and the top row of the second, then the next row, the next row, you just trade off them and then sew them back together. So I kind of did a version of that, but for a whole entire quilt, not just a block. And I kept it really graphic. So it was just one, my top block was just one fabric with like a slice of another fabric through it. And um, then the next block was just like three stripes. And then that's what I horizontally cut and put together and it looks really like architectural and it's actually kind of I'm kind of stoked about it so <laughs> a little experiment um, to try and get a, a a gift together for a for a baby shower <laughs> I'm scared about being able to finish it in time but it's happening I'm gonna sew a little bit on it tonight and then I just have to figure out what I have for batting laying around here.
All right, and yep, I did a stack and slash Bonnie for the um, when I made the two individual blocks. Those I did the stack and slash. So I actually have I actually have four blocks now, and it's going to be the front and the and the back. Um, so I could actually make two quilts out of it and just have solids on the back, but I'm doing it all in one quilt. So I stacked and slashed um, for that, and we've done that one other time here before, but that's when you like layer two piece two um, things on top of each other. So like to make the to make the the block, I laid two different fabrics on top of each other, then I sliced through them, and then I took the top fabric of one of those slices and put it underneath. So now I have like the one and two fabrics, and I sew them back together, and then I have another but the opposite one and two fabrics um but the you know the you know just the opposite fabric from the front one and then i sew them back together so i did that twice with two separate blocks and then i cross cut it's, it's a whole it probably sounds way confusing <laughs> i'm confusing myself talking about it but it it makes sense and uh, i'll show you uh, the result um when i'm done with it for sure but all right, we are uh, we are sliced, and you know what? I think we're gonna call it a night there, just because in my head I'm saying, oh, pressing that doesn't take any time. That's nothing. But I always get tripped up by that. <laughs> pressing always takes time, and there's a lot of pieces here, and I want to do it all at once. So we will. Um, we we have the that step four pieces done. We have these ones done. Um, these are from the step five, and these are from the step six. Uh, so we will get those up to this by uh, the end of our time tomorrow, hopefully. Then we'll be, um, we'll be sewing together pinwheels in no time. And then after that, it's easy peasy. We're almost done then. So I'm going to flip you around and uh, um, we'll call it an evening here. The hello. So yeah, I will show you guys. Um, I think I'll, I'll have the quilts or the front and back of this quilt, this baby quilt sewn together at least by tomorrow. So I can show you guys tomorrow kind of what, what I did. And I think I can, I can probably draw you the concept of this stack and slash a little bit better than, than um, <laughs> me talking about it. So we might talk, we might, uh, I might show you that because it is a really quick, fun way to make an artsy sort of graphic-y quilt. And I, I'm really excited about it. But here are the tiny, tiny half square triangles that we made. They are itty bitty. Look, they are so small. <laughs> uh, so a whole pile of these we're going to make uh, tomorrow. And this is what we'll, we'll make our tiny, tiny pinwheels. So the pinwheel blocks, they're going to be the same size as these. So <laughs> tiny, tiny. But I think, I think the big thing from tonight was getting organized. So... Again, only draw the diagonal lines on the ones that they say in the instructions and uh, then just spend some time reading through the instructions and pairing everything up and it'll, it'll all work out. And yeah, and I'm keeping them organized. Make sure to label things uh, so you can stay organized and know what fabrics to use along the way. Um, all right, guys, that is it. I'll get this up on uh, uh, Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube, and I will be back here on Penguin and Fish Facebook uh, tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So see you guys later. Good night. <laughs>